Hello everybody, this is Etho and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play series. We are over here in the end today. We're still working on this giant storage system, this possibly huge mistake because <laughs> we still don't know if this thing's going to work or not. We haven't uh, we haven't put all the pieces together and given it a try yet. That's what I'm hoping we're going to find out today. Hopefully get this thing up and running is the goal. Uh, but we still got quite a bit left to do on it, unfortunately. So, first off, what we're going to try to do is get the item filters uh, all set up. So there's, again, 16 of these pieces, 8 on each side. Each one holds 27 different items, like a full shulker box worth of items. So that's 432 items total that we got to set up item filters for. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know what goes in these item filters and where. <laughs> these are the item filters at the top here. So we got to figure that out. How are we organizing our items in the storage room? Now we're trying to set up our ender chest system uh, over here, right? So we're going to copy something similar to what we did before. Where we, for example, try to put all the flowers together in a single shulker box like this. So that they're all easily available for us. But as you've noticed here... We don't have all the saplings in here. We don't have uh, like the new torch flowers, for example. This is an old, old system I set up like five years ago, probably at this point. And it needs an update desperately for the new items that have come out in the game. Yeah, so that means not only do I need to collect every item in the game today, I also need to organize every item in the game today <laughs> into shulker boxes. And uh, also do it while factoring in many, many different things. Because again, there's many different ways you could organize the items in this game. There's not like one system to it, right? So I got to try to figure out what is the best system. Or at least, what is the best system for me? Aha, uh -huh, yeah. So trying to collect a stack of every single item in the game is no simple task, let me tell you. I spent quite a few hours fiddle farting around our world here. Running around looking for things. Thankfully, we have a long-running world, though, with a lot of stuff farmed up already. And we've also kind of already done this before in the past with the original Ender Chest system. So I had most of the stuff on hand here. I just went and raided that. And then anything we were missing, I went out in the world and farmed. And then after we got all this stuff together, I also had to organize it, which took me... I would guess at least six hours, <laughs> but I'm very happy with the results here. I put a lot of thought into it. I think it's good. It's going to last us a long time. Aha. Uh -huh, yeah. So I don't know how many of you have ever thought about this before, but this is something on my mind quite often as a Minecraft YouTuber. What do we do in Let's Play videos? Well, I play Minecraft. You watch me play Minecraft, right? Aha. Uh -huh. What do we do in Minecraft? Well, a big part of Minecraft is the building. So I build in Minecraft. You watch me build in Minecraft, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how many times have you seen me or some other Minecrafter be like, Hey guys, today we're going to build this house over here, and then boom, turn around, it's done. It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. I just skipped over the entire building process, and I just showed you the final result. Right over there. <laughs> or, hey, I'm going to build a castle today, guys, in the time lapse. Oh, it's, uh, it's done right there. Yeah, so a big part of um, Minecraft YouTube these days is not actually playing the game. It's like, we just skip it, and then we talk about our build forever, and then and that's it. So I... I'm guilty of it myself. I'm trying not to let go of the past. Maybe it's a mistake. I don't know. But I want you guys along with the building process where it makes sense at least, right? Obviously, some stuff I can get done a lot faster and creative. So I might still use that. But uh, we don't want to skip everything is what I'm getting at here. So that's a big reason I developed this whole uh, shulker system to begin with, this ender chest system. Because, like, let's say, for example, I want to build a house on the hill here. What am I going to do? Well, I to even begin building the house, I got to see what blocks are available to me, right? I, I need to know what my options are. So people go into creative where they got the creative menu and they got everything at their fingertips, right? So that's what the system's trying to mimic is so that we can actually just build stuff in survival. If I get an idea in survival, I can just build it in survival, hopefully. Um, I will mention before we go through this, Anything that's coming out on 1.21, I represent with a piece of paper here. So copper lamps, once I get them, that's where they're going, okay? Uh, let's just first look through these quickly in case anybody's trying to copy it. You'll get a nice uh, summed up part of it in the video here. And then we'll look at stuff a little bit more detailed in just a second here. Aha. Uh -huh. 
So I did a segment on this and I rambled for like 15 minutes <laughs> trying to explain every little decision I made with the whole thing. Uh, yeah, th there's a lot to this. We got to sum it up a little bit better this time though. I'm doing a retake. But you can probably see some stuff is missing. There's a lot of like grouping both by like color and uh, you know like a lot of stuff is, is together. Like all the bookshelves here for example are together. Not separate from each other. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of that going on. And then, uh, oh, did I miss something? Armadillo scoot. Uh huh. And then also, I don't have any scoot in my world. This is available now. I just don't have any. So I put that there for the turtle scoot. Okay. So let's try to take a deeper dive on how the system works. In total, we have 16 different shulkers here, which fit neatly in our ender chest. This has 27 slots. So that leaves us 11 extra where we still have room for, you know, extra rockets and and carrots and backup gear and iron blocks and if I need to move stuff to a build site. It doesn't take up the whole ender chest, right? So that's nice even if we leave these in all the time. Um, with these 16 shulker boxes, we have access to pretty much every single item in the game. I say that even though there's over a thousand items in the game and there's only 432 items in these shulker boxes <laughs> because we do a lot of compacting. So we have access if we're willing to do a little bit of crafting. So for example, it doesn't really make sense to store all the buttons in the game in our shulker boxes. Instead, we keep them in log form. If we need an oak button, we can craft this into planks and then into buttons, right? So that's how that works out. And we do that with quite a few things. Uh, another example here would be like the candle. We have the candle, we can see it's available. So it's kind of like that creative menu. We want to know it's an option, but we don't need to see all 17 different candles to really get the idea of, hey, maybe I should use a candle, right? If we do need a specific candle, like a red one, we can easily get it still just by going to our flower pots. This doubles in function as our dyes, or if we need extra wood, we can easily just grow a tree. Uh, you know, if we're just a couple shorter for something. But yeah, we can easily just take our poppies, turn it to red dye, use that red dye on our candle, and we got red candles in our ender chest. This was challenging to organize because there's a lot of items that can belong to several different groups. I'll give you an example. Like lichen, it gives off lighting, but it's also a plant. So do we put it with our lighting stuff here, or do we put it with our plants? I put it with our plants. <laughs> so you, you might not agree with all my decisions, and... Uh, you're free to change stuff up if you if you think it's better a different way. I think the biggest challenge with this whole system was trying to group things together into 27 slots in the shulker box here. Like you don't want to go one over or one under or it's going to not really work out too well. <laughs> so a lot of times the groups aren't big enough to even fill up all 27 slots. So you got to combine two groups together. So this is like our lighting stuff combined with our workstation sort of stuff. Um, and I thought they combined nicely together, these two groups together, because... Like if you're building a street lamp or like a chandelier in the game, a lot of times you want iron bars or you want cauldrons and anvils for those interesting shapes in your your street lamps. So I thought this worked out pretty well together. Um, we tried to make groups, but then also subgroups and groups within those subgroups and just tried to keep everything in a way where if you want something, the other thing you want is also with it. <laughs> so... A lot of the brownish color natural blocks are in this this uh, shulker. The logs are kind of their own group. And then we got like the brownish naturals on the right here. Um, all the dirt is combined in a group here at the top, all six together. The mud is all together over there. And then like a lot of times you think like if you're working with grass blocks, you'll probably want to also mix in some moss blocks. So that's why these are together as well. So you got to think about stuff like that, right? Uh, I'll give you another example here. Yeah, this is a this is like a really complex grouping over here. So we got like all the vines on the bottom, then like grasses and bushes in the middle, and then uh, the mushrooms at the top. But they also are like color aligned vertically. <laughs> so it's complicated, right? There's some there's some crazy stuff going on here. Now that we know what goes in the shulker boxes and how we're organizing stuff. That's going to make figuring out the item filters here much simpler for us. Pretty much all we got to do is just decide what shulker goes down which branch, which you can see I kind of worked out already. I tried to group stuff together so like all the plant things are side by side. Anything I figured we'd need to refill more often that we'd run out of more frequently would be near the front of the storage room so we don't have to walk all the way to the back of it every time we need a refill. 
The way we're going to do the item filters here is a little bit uh, special as well. Nothing crazy, but uh, you know, in the typical three long item filter, the way you do it is you usually put in like four filler items. And then let's say we're filtering cyan terracotta. You fill that up, it'll funnel down to 41 items and that's kind of its stable zone, right? Um, what that means is you have to sacrifice 41 items to your item filter <laughs> for it to function. And that gets kind of expensive, you know, like when you're trying to filter beacons, for example. But uh, just by chance here, the way this worked out, because we ended up spacing out our, our item filters, uh, they can't interfere with each other. They're all separate from each other. So that means I don't have to worry about overflowing this. Um, in fact, we can get away with just one item and then adding 41 filler items like that. So now anytime something goes in our, our filter, it always ends up with one left and we don't waste nearly as many items that way. And we can still like overflow it up to 64 and not worry about the signal spreading over the, to the ones next to it. It's not a problem. We are gonna need quite a few filler items though to get all those hoppers filled up. If I did my math right here, we need 11 shulker boxes full. And that's like 300 levels to name them all. <laughs> so I figured uh, I better go visit the, the villager uh, trading thing here. Get some levels that way. Do some trading at the same time. Works out pretty nicely. I'm just using sticks for this because um, it's something I can get pretty easy in my world here. So yeah, I'm just going up to here. I'm getting my levels, doing some trades. And every so often I go back over here, grab some sticks. Got my anvils laid out. And boom. Control A to select all, Control V to paste, boom, we got it. Good stuff, all right, we're back at our redstone ocean here, just adding in our filler items now that we got them. And uh, it's funny, with this project, there's so many things that I, I didn't think about, like every little job, like adding filler items to the item filters, normally isn't something you really consider as being part of the project, but when you multiply it by 432 like this, every little job, suddenly becomes a giant job <laughs> and uh it's fine though you know i don't do like giant stuff of this scale very often uh, i actually like doing grindy projects like this like it's a it's chill right it's it's sort of like a relaxing thing you put on some videos and uh you kind of enjoy your time gives you a good opportunity to think of new ideas and stuff as well while you're not really doing too much uh just the repetitive behavior or whatever Oh, I fell down. We got all the filler stuff done. So now what we got to do is go through all our shulkers. We take two of each of the items. We're doing the logs first here. And what we're going to do is go down these branches and just label like what is where in our storage room. Because like if I ever need to manually pick up a big load of something from our storage room, I'm going to come down these tunnels and I don't want to like have to check every barrel where it is, right? We want some kind of visual indicator. Uh, that doesn't cause lag, ideally, and the perfect thing for that is just placing the block in the physical world. So that's what we're doing here. It doesn't matter the order we do this either, because uh, we define the order later. So this is just for us, what makes sense to us. And I'm going to arrange the logs in the order they came out in the game, I think. Because that's kind of the way I've always done it. Uh, I think we want mangrove, and then cherry wood, and then bamboo. All right, and then what we got to do with the other block is go up above and we need to match the exact same spot with the item filter. So again, we did oak, birch, spruce, jungle. So oak first and then birch. And I got to go all along here and do that with every single one of these. <laughs> and it's going to take a bit of time. I think what we'll do is just work on one of these branches uh, just to do our like prototyping because we're kind of in the area of like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And we're just uh, figuring stuff out as we go. And actually, I think we do need to move these labels somewhere else. They're kind of in the way here for something I wanted to do. So this uh, this storage system, the way it works, we're going to have a storage minecart running underneath here. And like this is our oak logs in this first one, right? So the oak logs are going to be in this hopper. This storage minecart's going to have an inventory very similar to this, where it has one of each of the items in. And whenever it runs low on the oak, as it runs by this hopper here, it'll pick up one, right? And that's how it gets refilled. So one problem that can happen with our storage system here, there's going to be a shulker loading device at the end of each of these branches, kind of like where my head is right now. 
that this minecart goes to drops off its items. Um, that delivery system will have a buffer of about three stacks of items. If we take them too quickly, they'll recharge slowly over time as this gets one item every time it passes by here. But uh, if we try to take more than three stacks out at a time, what will happen is the minecart will get a void spot and then something else is going to take that place in the minecart and it's going to throw everything out of whack. <laughs> so that's an issue you got to be careful of. Another issue is if our storage room doesn't have all of these uh, spots filled up, like if any of these hoppers are empty, there is a chance we could run something dry and then there's a void spot and something else takes its place. We can solve that manually by just putting in a filler item like if we don't have that item and we want to still use our system we just throw a piece of paper or something in our minecarts out of order we don't have this just yet until we do right it's one option we can do another thing we should probably do here is add an actual safety mechanic to this so like the oak logs will be in here i think what we'll do is run a comparator from that hopper and if we have oak logs, this comparator will be on. If we don't, it'll be off. And if anything runs out in our system here, we want to stop the delivery, right? And put out a warning, hey, you got to refill something, I think. So we're going to actually move this path up. And I don't know where to put the labels because like I wanted them here. And now if we try to put it like one above that, it's going to block our view to the barrel where we grab stuff out of. You can still reach it, it's just not nice. So maybe we put this in the ceiling or something. I, I don't know, we'll have to find a new spot for it. But anyways, we're gonna run a signal down, I think, like this. And we can also use this signal for the auto crafter that's coming out. And whenever something runs out in our system, we can use this to say, hey, craft more of this. All right, I think we got our safety lines all installed here. So every single item is going to put out a signal. And that goes down below here to the redstone, then to the torches. Each one gets its own redstone torch. And then they combine all together at the line at the bottom here. So if we're ever out of anything in the system, this redstone line will turn on. And then we use that to catch the minecart, probably with a trap door or a piston, just to hold it until we restock the missing item. And then we can uh, let the minecart go again. And that should stop void spots from appearing in the minecart and messing up the system. Yeah, so as I was adding this, the thought did occur to me, if we ever did run out of an item that needed to be restocked, it's going to be pretty annoying to figure out what item that is. <laughs> if we have to check all 27 things down the branch, right? So maybe we do want some kind of indicator light for each one. If it's stocked, these will be on. If it runs out of stock, it'll go off. We'll do that on both sides. Um, originally I was wanting to have a soul soil tunnel, like I was going to put slabs over top of this, but I'm not so sure now, because if we run on this, we're going to get that jiggle, jiggle step, right? We don't want that. So probably get rid of the ones between here at the very least. We might leave soul soil down the middle and then we could put carpet over that, like wool carpet or even moss. And that might look okay. Like I'm a little worried about how this is going to look. <laughs> It's not going to look very good. Let's face it. I don't have a lot of working room here. Like everything kind of has to stay a certain way, but this will probably be our best option. Oh, I tell you what, I think I overlook something every time I design something like this. Something slips my mind, something I don't think about. You know what? I haven't been thinking about how we're going to power the power rails in this. Um, so I think in total, there's three power rails per branch. You got the one down here. This is for the storage minecart for getting the items out of the hoppers. This one over here is for getting the empty shulkers out of these hoppers. And then it delivers them up to the top. Um, this is actually going to be fairly easy. Like, we got to watch the hoppers here. We can't lock those. But I think we can just throw a lever. Like, we got this space, thankfully. If we power it there. It's going to power both that and above. And I don't think that's going to interfere with any hoppers. So that's that's easy, right? The the empty shulkers get delivered to the top here. This is where I've really messed up. <laughs> so we got to power this line up here somehow. Uh, we're walking over top hoppers right now. There's hoppers to the left of us underneath the composters and on the right. 
and there's nowhere to th like squeeze a lever in there to power it from the side. And guess what happens if I put a redstone block on top of the power rails? We got these hoppers up here at our eye level as well, and they're staggered. So if we put one here, that hopper is going to get locked. If we put one here, the one on the other side is going to get locked. So there's like absolutely nowhere for us to power this. The good news though is that power rails have always been kind of interesting in this game. Kind of like how uh, you can do the bud stuff with pistons. You can do the bud stuff with power rails as well where they don't update like you would quite expect. I don't remember exactly how to do it though. I think we got to jump ahead here. Let's see if this works. If we remove this one, does it does it keep the charge? Oh, we lost one. <laughs> All right, I got a little greedy, I guess. Wait a sec. We go back one. The trick is not to go too far ahead as you do this. Yeah, so that's all powered. Um, I usually don't like doing this kind of stuff in my world because I'm always worried an update is going to change it where it's like, oh yeah, you know that power rail thing you used to always do? Yeah, we're, we fixed that. <laughs> uh, you know that storage room you built? It doesn't work anymore. Okay. But we don't really have much choice here, so I'm doing it. Yeah, so it's it's keeping the power here. So we just do that all the way to the end, and uh, it should be fine. Very good. All right, we got it powered all the way down here, and we just left the two redstone blocks at each end where uh, we don't have to worry about the hoppers getting locked. Should be fine, I think. Next step to building this, we got to make like some kind of looping track for the storage minecart here. So I think what we're going to do is go down just one block and run a rail line underneath it and somehow make it loop. We're, we've kind of figured this out before. We were going to do like a bubble elevator on one end and on the other end, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work just yet. Where are my progress? And we have like no extra stuff around here. <laughs> I'm I'm stealing it from all the shulkers. I'm not supposed to be doing this, but I'm not going back to the, to my storage room to get more stuff. Pro Ender Pearl. No. No, oh, it's a mega fail. I got Endermited even. Oh, he's trying to push me out of the world. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Okay, uh, let's. Pro Ender Pearl. Oh, first try. Look at that. Okay, let's let's keep this going. So we got to go further here. And right over here is where we're going to want soul sand. Like a so. And then we're going to make a tube. Here, let's, let's get rid of these. Jump the gun on those. Okay. Right. And this... Whoa, this is freaky. I don't like seeing void. Okay. There and there. We want the rails to come all the way to the end. And then this comes up. And we don't have to worry about water flowing because the rail will stop it. So the water can go here. And then we want it up like this, I think. Yeah. So if we break this, it should be con contained, I think. Cover this. Okay, so I think our next step is going to be figuring out where the shulker loaders need to go, like where this minecart needs to deliver its stuff. And we want to do like a height test to figure out how far we can reach. Oh, I can't even reach that high. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going way too high here to begin with. So we want to be able to shift and place the shulker. So that's too high up there. Okay, so let's uh, let's fix that. Get one down lower. I think that might still be too high. Yeah, can't place it. Okay, so let's go one more hopper. I'm thinking this is it here. Yeah, now we can. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five blocks. Now I do have a question. Can we get away with one higher if we put a slab down? Because we might be able to. Higher will probably look better, right? Um... But I don't want to have to jump to place the shulker. Okay, we can. The only thing better than redstone, right, is incoherent redstone. That on-the-fly thinking that you ch just can't get anywhere else. Okay, uh, I think this will work, actually. So let's not use a torch. So when the minecart comes here, it's going to sit on that piston arm. And when the system's not disabled, it's going to retract and then the 
elevator should kick in. You know, I think we might have it now. I think this will work actually. Let's give it a try. So it's gonna stick out a little ways here, but I think that's fine. A little more than I expected. So we're almost like this is kind of middle of the room. Or is it no at the beacon here is the middle of the room. So it's it's off on the side actually still. I tried to make this main area pretty wide just in case it did stick out quite a ways. And uh, I think it's fine. So what we gotta do is get our bubble columns going. So this, we gotta go down. Double check there's no leaks in here. I think we're good. So I'm gonna run water all the way up here. I'm really nervous I'm gonna wreck some redstone. <laughs> it's always a concern. I think we're good. Okay, just double checking. Nope. I always wonder if like Notch ever did redstone. Like, why did he make water wash redstone away? <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I did miss a fence gate. Uh, I don't think that messed anything up though. Yeah, I was supposed to put one here. I think. Yeah. Okay. That's good. What we gotta do now. We're going to have water where the stair is. It's going to flow one block this way, and then that fence gate's going to stop it. So let's get that down. Oh, and it's going to flow out the sides. Okay, so I do need to block that, actually. Hoping we could keep it open so we could see better, but that's fine. And we'll take that out. Oh, I'm on my fortune pick now. And one more thing of water. We're going to make it, we're going to put it down here, and then it's going to do a little loop around over up top all the hoppers. Right, so we need to make the minecart go to all five hoppers. So it, it lands on the top one, goes to this one, then it goes around to that, then to that, then to that, and then we gotta send it back to pick up more items. Right, so that's what we're doing here. Uh, we will get our ice over here. And that should be just long enough to reach the fence gate. Yep, okay, that's looking good. Lock that up. I'm out of glass. Okay, that's fine. I think we have just enough there. And let's give it a try. So when we send the minecart here... Oh, not another one. They're getting down here, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta do something about that, probably. I don't know if they, they'll pick up anything, but I don't trust them. I think they're going on the ledge there and teleporting down. I gotta, I gotta take care of that. I gotta mine it away, I think. Anyways. Let's let's get this pushed over. So right now the system should be disabled. So this should just sit on top of the piston arm, right? Inside the, the water column. But then whenever we load up the system, the piston should switch. Let's just force it manually here. Yeah, and then the minecart went up the, the column. Should pop up here. There it comes. It'll fall down. Now it should drop off its items, assuming it had any, to the hoppers as it goes around. It goes around slowly, so it should drop off, I would guess, at least 5 to 10. I've never actually tested, though. And it's pretty slow. That's the other thing. We might need to find ways of speeding this up. Because <laughs> it only picks up, I think, one item per loop. Or slowing it down so it picks up more items from the hopper as it goes by. I, I, I'm not sure what to do, really. Okay, then it's going to fall. Let's see if we get stuck here. No, it's good. Okay. So, yeah, I think we, we got it working nice nice and good here. And then on the other end here, we, we set up that other water column, remember? So it, it shoots up here and then hops on the track. Actually, you know what I think happened here? I think the minecart falls through the soul sand, like through the block. Yeah, I thought it maybe went up the water column and I just missed it, but no, I think it just glitches through like that. So we'll need to come up with something else for that. That's not going to work. Uh, it's, it's not too big of a deal, though. We can just we just need a block somewhere to stop it. Uh, anyways, we got a fair bit done on this. There is quite a lot left to do, though, so I think we're going to have to end it here, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but this is the, uh, the shulker loader. So we're going to have 16 of these in total, eight per side, running all the way down each side, right? Um, I think what we'll do is maybe add a way of, like, after we send the minecart back, we bounce it back and forth a few times before we send it again to the, the water. That way it has time to pick up a few more than just one item. I think that will be way more efficient. We'll probably need some kind of counter system to do that, though, which will complicate things a little bit. 
Uh, so I got to copy this over to all 16 of them. And also we got to work out the water streams I think we're going to go for. Either water streams or some kind of dropper thing. There are ways of doing instant droppers, I believe. I don't know if that's worth looking into. Or should I just do water streams for this? I don't know. But we'll have to like zigzag our item drop off through the whole top here. We'll also need to make some kind of shulker unloader system. Okay, this is going to go very well. There's not going to be any problems here. I'm not going to get stuck with the chickens like I did last time. <laughs> I need more uh, feathers for the common of the days. Okay, we got we got some feathers. I think maybe one of these days I should make a real chicken farm. This is like pretty pathetic. Oh. <laughs> uh. I only made a sheep farm recently. Like, there's a lot of the, the basic farms I don't have in this game. I don't have a rabbit farm or anything. I don't have Scoot. I'm slacking, everybody. I gotta get to work. It's time, everybody. Let's do the comment of the day, which says, Hey, Etho, have you considered playing Vintage Story at all? It seems like a game that would be right up your alley. It's essentially Terraforma Craft, but standalone, with majorly expanded features and some really interesting mechanics yeah i'm kind of hoping to check it out like in a few months i can't do it right now like i'm, I'm kind of busy with other stuff but uh it's definitely a game i've had my eye on for a long time <laughs> i've kind of been waiting for you know to get a little bit more polished and and i've been debating it like if i should make videos on it or or what i should do just play it for fun um i want to make sure like it's in a good state if i do make videos on it because uh I think the makers of Terra Firmacraft, or at least some of them, are the ones that are making Vintage Story. And I've actually, like, played with the makers before. <laughs> like, I kind of know them somewhat, right? So I don't want to, like, play their game and, be, and have it, like, in an unpolished state and then start ragging on it or anything, you know? Like, I, I want to give my honest feedback about the game when I'm playing it. So I've kind of just been waiting for it to be in a good state. And I think it's, like, getting very close to that. I think it might still be missing some kind of end game, but I think very soon. There's apparently like a little memento to me in that game. I think um, they added an, an Etho slab to it. <laughs> so if I play it, uh, I, I gotta go check that out. Right? I gotta see if I can get a, an Etho slab. Apparently it's like the rarest item in the game though. It's like super hard to get. You gotta like mine some clay to get it. A little throwback to uh, Chocolate Island, you know? But uh, anyways, I think that'll do it for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one, take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.